I'm Jono Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at part two of creative spatial effects. Now, in a previous video, what I've done is to treat a production of a very different type to the production we're going to be working on in this video to a series of spatial effects treatments. So if you haven't watched that episode, go and watch it before this one so you have a chance to see the first set of techniques that we've looked at. What we're going to do in this video is to move that idea on to look at a classic production technique first. This idea of what we call side-chained compressed reverb. A great technique to use whenever you're trying to find space in the mix for a vocal. And then we're going to move on, taking what we learn in this first half into a series of other treatments as well. So let's get lost in some more spatial effects. Okay, let's have a listen to the track we're going to be working on in this second part. Love ain't simple with you anymore We have become opposites No, love ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong Okay, so generally what happens when people are mixing vocals is they want to add reverb and space to them. And obviously songs come in many different forms. You might be writing a massive power ballad, or you might be writing an absolute Saturday night party record. Either way, some form of space around a vocal often seems like a good idea. The only problem is that the moment we start working with reverb, we kind of take the vocal further away. If you think about the way that reverb works, effectively we associate long, big reverbs with sounds that are further away from us than closer, drier spaces. So what we kind of want is a reverb that is there to fill in the holes in the gaps between vocal phrases, but one that doesn't get in the way when the vocalist is actually singing to us. And this is where the classic production technique comes in. Okay, so what we're gonna do is to set up a new auxiliary bus send. I'm gonna use the first available one, which is bus seven. I'm gonna turn up the level to it option and click and that will just take it up to unity gain and then what i'm going to do is to open up space designer so logic's convolution reverb and i'm going to just go and find a treatment that i might want to use so i'm going to just dive in to the um the sounds here and we're going to come into the large spaces i'm going to come and look at plate reverbs and i'm going to start with this shimmering plate the longest reverb i can find i want something which is big and epic okay what i'm going to do is to solo the vocal and now obviously it's going to have some reverb on it Love We have become opposites No love it ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong Okay, now actually what's interesting about this particular reverb is it's got some delay in it too. That's actually quite nice. I don't yet know really whether or not it's in time. And if it's not, we might have a bit of a look at that. But nevertheless, we've got this huge space. Okay, so let's put it back into context. I think what we're going to find now is that the reverb is a bit of a distraction. It's gonna be nice in the gaps, but I think it's gonna to be too much when our singer is actually singing her words. Love ain't simple when you We have become opposites No love it ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong And sure enough, it sounds far too swimming pooly. Okay, so what could I do? Well, I could definitely automate the return volume of that channel. If I wanted to, I suppose I could drop the level whenever the reverb is kind of in the way and I could bring it up in the gaps. But what I really want is a dynamic control that's gonna do that for me. And this is where the classic production technique comes in. I'm just gonna close down Space Designer. And what I'm gonna do after that plugin on this auxiliary channel is to put in Logic's compressor. That's a Dynamics plugin and here it is here. Now, Logic actually has a number of different compressor sort of algorithms within this host. We're just going to go for the Platinum Digital Classic. This is sort of Logic's own version of this compressor. Now, what I want to do is to feed in the dry original vocal part, which is here, as a sidechain input source. Now, what that means is that the compressor isn't going to respond to the signal on its channel. Instead, it's looking elsewhere to this sidechain input source to control how the dynamics are going to respond. In other words, now, having sent the vocal in, it's going to respond to the contours of the vocal rather than the reverb on this auxiliary channel. 
So what I'm going to do is to turn off automatic gain compensation. That automatically boosts the output level, and I don't want to do that. And I'm also going to turn off automatic release. I want to be controlling the release time. We'll come back to this in a moment of how quickly the compressor recovers. So to hear the effect, what I need to do is to drop the threshold probably a little bit more and increase the ratio. That means more of the signal is going to be compressed and the ratio controls how much it's going to be compressed, how squashed the signal is. So for quite an extreme effect, I've dropped the threshold quite a lot, and what I've also done is to increase the ratio. So what that basically means is now the compressor is going to respond pretty hard to the original vocal level, and of course what's then going to happen is when the vocal stops and it hasn't got a signal that it's receiving as a sidechain input source, it will just behave as if it's not being compressed. Let's have a listen. Love ain't simple with you anymore We have become opposites No, love ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong Okay, so we can see that every time she sings the level backs away and what that does is to drop the level of the reverb and every time she stops singing therefore the compressor backs off which means that we get all of that reverb in all of the gaps. Now the only thing is that at the moment we're not really feeling a connection between exactly when that release time takes over to recover the compressor and therefore fill in the gaps from a reverb perspective. It all feels like it's happening quite quickly at the moment, that the moment she stops singing, the reverb comes straight back in. And of course, that's where the release time setting is going to really matter. The longer we set this, the longer it will take for the compressor to recover, and therefore we should be able to create a slightly more natural response in terms of the way that the compressor behaves as it starts to feed the vocal level or the reverb level back up. Love ain't simple with you anymore We have become opposites No, love ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong And that certainly sounds a bit better to me. Now, the other thing is that at the moment, probably there's too much of this effect. There are a couple of ways that I could control that. I could drop the overall output level of this particular channel, or I could actually take the makeup gain dial down. Remember, this is effectively the overall output volume for this particular effect. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposite. No, love it ain't simple with you anytime. Battle line strong. Okay, now the interesting thing is that by chance we happen to pick a reverb effect that's got a bit of a delay in it. And now that we're treating it this heavily, we're not really hearing that delay in the same way. But might there be a way to apply this kind of compressed effects treatment to a delayed signal? instead of a, uh, a reverberant one. Well, let's try, let's find out. Okay, what we're gonna do is to turn this off for a second. I'm gonna turn off the send level to that particular reverb. And what I'm gonna do is to set up another auxiliary bus, the next one that's available here, bus number eight. And this is going to be our delay treatment. I'm just going to come back to seven for a moment and label this. So this is gonna be our side chain reverb. And then I'm gonna come back to bus eight and I'm interested in trying something similar, but with a delay. So I'm going to label that SC delay. Okay, I'm going to choose the tape delay. So tape delay is obviously going to be in the delay folder. So we're gonna come down into here and come and find the tape delay. And what I'm interested in doing is producing something that sounds a little bit telephony. So not a full frequency delay, but one that's deliberately uh, frequency restricted. And I can do that. Firstly, I'm gonna turn the uh, wet level up to 100%. I just want this channel to provide me with delay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the frequency area kind of around the kind of telephony sort of area so that we're getting this kind of thin band passy kind of treatment. Let's just have a listen to this as it stands without any compression at all. Remember, feedback is always gonna control the number of echoes, the number of repeats that we hear. Love ain't love ain't you, you anymore. anymore. We have become, we have become opposite. Opposite. No, 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 no
time. Okay, I'm going to go for this slightly more diffuse tape head. I like that a little bit more. It just slightly smears out the delays and makes them a little bit less clinical. For now, I'm not going to do any modulation, no pitch wobbling, nothing. Okay, so we've now got a delay, which again is going to be really overwhelming the mix. So let's repeat our trick. What we're going to do is to put in a compressor after it. And in fact, actually, if I was being really smart, what I could do would be to open up the mixer. And in fact, we could just steal the compression treatment from our first auxiliary bus, which is bus number seven, which is just here. And what we could do instead would be to put it on our delay channel instead, by literally just copying that across. And that is also going to bring in the uh, compression settings that we used for this channel as well. So on bus number eight now, what we'll find when we open up the compressor is the audio two, so the sidechain input source from our drive vocal is here with all of the same settings. So what does that sound like when we listen to it in context? Again, what we should find now is that the delays are only really apparent in the gaps between phrases. Let's have a listen. Love We have become opposite. My love ain't simple with you anytime. Battle line strong. Okay, that's working well, but I like the kind of telephony thin. Um, sort of repeats, but I want to take that idea a little bit further. And the great thing about this kind of processing is that we can go further. So what I'm going to do is to use the tape delay as my original echo, the compressor, the sidechain compressor as the kind of dynamic control for it. But what I'm then going to do is I'm going to put some filtering on these echoes as well. Now what this is going to allow me to do is to introduce the idea of movement. And I'm going to do that using a low frequency oscillator, which is here. What this is going to do is to start to interrupt the signal using this waveform shape. And what I can then do is to choose the speed of that undulation. So as basically effectively the tone rises and falls, it's going to be using this shape and across one bar. And what I can then do is to set the default cutoff value for the filter, which basically is going to be the sort of baseline of the way that the tone of this sound is set. And then the LFO is going to make it rise and fall. So again, if we solo this for a moment, just the vocal, we'll hear the dry vocal, triggering these delays, which are now going to have a little bit of tone change on them as well. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposites. No love ain't simple with you anytime. Battle line strong. Okay, that's nice. I'm experimenting with the difference between one and two bars. So effectively what we're doing is we're just getting that either happening over one bar or two. What I've also done is just slightly raise the cutoff value and I've introduced a tiny bit of resonance just to make the whole effect just a little bit more vibrant. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposites. No love ain't simple with you Anytime, line strong. Okay, I'm going to go with this two bar effect. Let's put that back in in context with the rest of the track. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposites. No love ain't simple with you anytime, line strong. Okay, and what I'm also going to do is to experiment by putting the reverb back in at the same time. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposites. No love ain't simple with you anytime. Battle line strong. Okay, that's really interesting. I'm going to do one more little comparison, which is what happens when we take out the two compressors. So remember, without those, this is what the this reverb treatment would sound like and this delay treatment without any dynamic control. I think this is going to swamp the vocal. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposite. No love ain't simple with you. Anytime, 
So in this episode, what we've done is to look at a classic production technique, which is this idea of putting a side-chained compressor after a spatial effect. What that allows us to do is to control the dynamics, the volume effectively, of that spatial effect so that it's quieter when the source sound is triggering it and then it comes up to full volume in all of the gaps between these vocal phrases. By the way, this will work really nicely with loops, percussion elements, all kinds of other um, parts within your tracks as well, not just within vocals, but it's definitely a really useful technique to use on vocals. And then what we've done is to go one step further, which is to look at a similar technique, but not using reverb, using delay instead. We've smeared that delay by using a diffuse tape head, but also by using um, sort of the auto filter to produce undulations in tone change. But again, it's the side chain compressor that's really controlling the dynamics of that effect. And as a result, what we get is a nice clean vocal whenever our vocalist is singing. And then this kind of world of really interesting little sonic spatial treatments in all of the gaps.